What is going on guys, it is Bucky and welcome to your second intermediate Java programming tutorial. And in this tutorial I'm going to show you guys how to find characters and also substrings in a string. Sound awesome? I know, it does. So let's go ahead and get started and make a string. And um, I'm going to name my string S and I'm going to set it equal to like Bucky Roberts, Bucky Roberts. You don't need to spell it right, but just have a long string like that. Now, in order to find characters in, sh in a substring, you need, well, let's go ahead and make a system out print line. And what you need to do is you need to write what string you want to search on. And I want to search this string right here, S. And now you need to call a method called index of. Index of. And is your parameter, you write what character do you want to search for. And I'm going to go ahead and write K in there. And I'm going to run this, and you're, you guys are going to see what happens. As you see, it gives us the result 3 right here. So what exactly did index of do? Well, it said index of k. So that pretty much means search for the first instance of k. So you know that this begins with 0, like everything on your computer. 1, 2, 3. So k is at 3 to begin with. So this pretty much means, like I said, search for the first index of k and return its placement. So it did, but you can also do other stuff than just put it. I didn't. I don't know why they just they didn't name it like search for or something like that. But they named it index of, so that's what it did. And aside from one parameter, you can also have another parameter. In this other parameter, if I put like five or something, this is a starting point. So what you're telling index of in this method is all right. Search for the first index of k, but ignore the first five right here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this isn't even going to look at these at all. It's going to hop right to 5 and start here and start searching right there. So if we go ahead and run this now, instead of 3 or whatever, it now has 15. So if you count over 15, then this is the next K right here. So you have an optional starting point to search, but you know, that isn't really used as often. And if you guys are wondering, all right, what happens if I give it a parameter that isn't in there at all, like X? Now X isn't in Bucky Roberts, Bucky Roberts at all. So let's go ahead and search for this. And what happens is it gives you a negative one or a false result. So now we know how to use index of and another cool thing we can do is look for substrings in the same way. So instead of just adding one character, if you add your double quotation marks, you can add something like Rob. So Rob appears right here, and if you search this, it'll give you the starting point for this, which is five. And we can see that in let me scroll there, zero, one, two, three, four, five. That's where Rob starts. Now, just like before, we can give it an optional starting point of like uh, 10 or something. And let's see what happens right there. 10, run that baby, okay, 17. So why did we get 17? Just to clarify one more time. Well, it found this one at five, but then it said, all right, I'm not even supposed to start right here. I'm not even supposed to start searching to like somewhere around here. So now that I begin here, the first one I find is at 17. So that's why it gave you the answer 17. So finding stuff in a string, easy enough. Let's learn some more stuff. And I didn't think I'd have time in this tutorial, but evidently I do. So let's go ahead and make a string. And let's go ahead and make two. Let's go ahead and make like um, A and set this equal to um, bacon. I said a lot of variables equal to bacon. And let's go ahead and add a space after this. And let's go ahead and put string B equals monster. So now we have a string that says bacon, and now we have a string that says monster. Now oftentimes we have a let's go ahead and just make a system out print line right here. Now oftentimes we know that we can concatenate strings using something like this, A plus B. Now this output would give you obviously bacon monster right here. But what if you had a program where you didn't know what the strings were yet or if you didn't want to concatenate them just this way? 
Well, I know that this is pretty straightforward and easy concatenation, but there's also another way to concatenate strings, and you do this more often in programming, and you'll see this later on when we actually use it. It's pretty um, difficult to show you an example that's useful without building a huge program, but um, this is how you concatenate strings more often than not. You go ahead and put the string name, which is A, and put concat, which pretty much means join this with another one. And as your parameter, you write the string you want to join it to. And I'm going to write B right there. And now if I run this, we get bacon monster, just like that. So what it does is it takes this string as a parameter and sticks it on the end of this string. And yes, I did remember to put a space this time, so it just didn't say... You know, that would even work right there if you ran that. Bacon monster. Just one word. Easy enough. So now that we even cover that, let's go ahead and learn some more stuff. Um, we can keep that right there. Now let me teach you guys about something called replace. Now this is, you can use this to replace, let's see, what can I replace? Well, let's go ahead and put A. Uh, that won't really work. I can't really change any of these words easily, but anyways, here's what the basic concept is. You can use a method called replace, and as your parameters for this, you go ahead and write what you want to replace in the string, and I'm going to replace like bacon and I'll, I'll just make it called taken or something. So let's go ahead and replace the capital B and we want to replace it with a F. So now if we go ahead and run this, we see bacon now turns in to Facon, just like that. Again, I couldn't come up with anything funny or else I would, but I mean, you can't really turn bacon into anything easily, but I tried. Now aside from this, replace, we already still got two more methods, and that's to uppercase and to lowercase. So let's go ahead and take B and put to upper case just like that and now it takes no parameters and instead it just changes everything to upper case so let's go ahead and output this and as you can see my little monster now turned into big monster and this is useful when you're writing to a database and you want everything consistent since you know some people type their names in all lowercase or all capitals you usually want to change it in a database to all capitals or all lowercase so uh yeah that's it pretty much or if you are uh, like I said you can change the first character now that you know how to do that to lowercase I mean the uppercase and the rest to lowercase that will add some consistency if they're like filling out a form or something and the last thing I want to come over or excuse me go over is this trim method right here now if a user enters a bunch of spaces and you don't want that to happen let's go ahead and see what happens when we output it outputs that bunch of spaces too since it's part of the string but oftentimes you want to get rid of that bunch of spaces or those bunch of spaces whatever I'm not grammatically correct but who the heck cares and all you have to do is write trim in this trim method it as you can see it removes any white space or spaces pretty much so let's go ahead and mo and save this and as you can see my monster with a bunch of spaces right here now turn it into a monster with no spaces at all. So that's pretty much all the string methods I'm going to be going over. I, there's more, but I mean, you guys don't really want to sit here and watch me go over all these string methods or you'll grow old. So in the next tutorial, I'm probably going to be going over recursion. Now everyone thinks recursion is so confusing, but I'm going to make it really easy for you guys. Give the quick one too, and you guys are going to love me. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I will see you then.